So the molecular formula of a substance is the chemical formulas that give the actual numbers of atoms of each element in the substance. Okay, for example, uh, ethene, C2, H4. Okay, this formula, it tells us the actual numbers of carbons and actual numbers of hydrogens uh, in the molecule. And this is called molecular formula. Okay, it's called the molecular formula. Empirical formula show the uh, simplest ratio, right? CH2, uh, okay, because the ratio is 1 to 2. Uh, 1 to 2. And this is called the empirical formula. Okay, so that's the difference. That's the difference between molecular formula and empirical formula. Molecular formula, it shows the actual numbers of each element. But empirical formula, it only shows the simplest ratios of each element in the molecule. Up to this stage, okay, some of you may ask, then why we need empirical formula? Since we have molecular formula, the molecular formula, it gives us all the information, right? The actual numbers of carbons and the actual numbers of hydrogens, right? From these actual numbers of carbon and hydrogen, actually we straight away know the simplest ratio, right? From here we straight away know the, the ratio is 1 to 2. Then, then why we still need the empirical formula, right? The answer is, empirical formula is the formula that you get from experiment. So from experiment, you can only get empirical formula. You cannot get molecular formula. You do experiments, then you do some calculations, then you can only get empirical formula. And then from empirical formula, we find molecular formula, which means uh, before we know the empirical formula, we don't know the molecular formula. You must find the empirical formula first, then only you can find the molecular formula. Okay. So that is not the question that whether we want the empirical formula or we don't want. Okay? You must find the empirical formula first before you can find molecular formula. So that is the significance of empirical formula. Okay? Actually, we want molecular formula only, but before that, we must find the empirical formula first. Huh? So that is uh, the two types of uh, chemical formula that you need to know, empirical formula and molecular formula. Finding molecular formula. Given that the empirical formulas of benzene is CH and uh, its relative molecular mass is 78, eh? so find the molecular formulas of benzene. Okay, so the empirical formulas of benzene is CH, okay, but remember if this is only the simplest ratio, okay, simplest ratio. Uh, maybe benzene is a uh, C2H2 or it can be C3H3 or it can be C4H4 or C5H5 or it can be C6H6, C7H7, okay. Uh, so the empirical CH, eh? but the molecular formula can be all this because C2H2, C3H3, or C4H4, all these, eh? the simplest ratio is 1 to 1. So the empirical formula is CH. Eh? Okay? Mm -hmm. For all these molecules, eh? the empirical formula is CH. So we don't know which one is benzene. Okay? We don't know. Eh? Okay? But uh, we know the relative molecular mass is 78. You can try to find the relative molecular mass. Okay, try to find the relative molecular mass for each one. Uh, for example, the relative molecular mass for this one, C2H, uh, C2H2. Uh. Okay, now the relative atomic mass uh, of carbon, carbon uh, is 12 uh, and hydrogen is 1. Uh. So we have two carbon uh, for the C2H2. We have two carbon, 2 times 12 and then plus uh, 2 hydrogens, 2 times 1. And uh, this is equal to 26. Okay, 26. Uh. For C3H3, okay, C3H3, we have three carbons, three times 12 plus uh, three times one, okay, 36 plus 39, 39, okay. Uh, this one, we have four carbons, four hydrogens, okay, so this is uh, 52, five, six, Okay, we found this, 78, okay, 78, eh? because uh, the relative molecular formula is 78. Okay, then we know uh, this is the molecular formula of benzene. You see, eh? because we know the relative molecular mass, eh? okay, we know the empirical formula. If from the empirical formula, okay, we can predict that the molecular formula is either C2H2, C3H3, C4H4, eh? okay. 
Okay, then you find the relative atomic mass, uh, sorry, relative molecular mass for each one. Okay, then you see which one the relative molecular mass is 78. Uh, then that is the uh, molecular formula. Okay, so the molecular formula for benzene is C6H6. Eh? Okay, you will found that this working is very tedious, right? Okay, yep, it's very tedious. You need to do a lot of calculations and only you get the answer, right? Okay, so... Uh, there's another easier way. Okay, let me show you. So uh, the empirical formula, that's right. The empirical formula is uh, CH. Okay, then the molecular formula it can be CH. Okay, and then multiply by n. Okay, multiply by n means that the C multiply by n, the H also multiply by n. Eh? Okay, if n equal to six, uh, then it will be C six H six. If n equal to uh, 5, okay, then it will be C5H5. Uh. So the, the whole molecule, this uh, formula multiplied by n. C multiplied by n, H multiplied by n. Uh. But we don't know what's the number of n. Uh. The molecular formula is CH brackets n. To find the relative molecular mass, relative molecular mass, uh, okay. So we have n carbons, uh, n carbons, so n multiplied by 12 uh, okay and then we also have n hydrogens right so n times 1 uh, and this is equals to 78 okay uh, then you will find that this become a linear equations a linear equations uh, okay so uh, 12n plus n we have 13n here okay equals to 78 therefore n equal to 78 divided by 13 which is equal to 6 okay now we know n equal to 6 if n equal to 6 then the molecular formula is equal to C6H6. Eh? Okay, so this is a molecular formula. Okay, so that is how we find the uh, molecular formula for empirical formula. You must know the relative molecular mass. Then only you can find the molecular formula. Okay, uh, you can either use this method or this method. Okay, example seven. Okay, find the molecular formula. C eight H sixteen. So the molecular formula is C eight H sixteen. Example nine. What is the mass of metal X that can combine with fourteen point four gram of oxygen to form X oxide with molecular formula X two O three? Okay, X two O three. Now these questions, uh, okay, these questions, uh, it tell us that. There is an oxide, okay, and this oxide is uh, X2, X2O3, eh? X2O3. Means that the ratios of X and O, eh? okay, the ratios of uh, X to O is 2 to 3. Eh? You, you have 2X and 3 O. This is a, this, this, this a ratio, okay, this is just a ratio. Eh? That's right here, this is just a ratio, okay. Uh, then how about the mass? Now uh, we know that so this metal X is combined with fourteen point four gram of oxygen. Uh, okay, the mass of oxygen uh, is fourteen point four gram, uh, but the mass of X we don't know. The mass of X we don't know. So uh, the question wants us to find the mass of X. Now if you still remember, if you still if you still remember, we can find the number of mole is equal to the mass of a substance over the molar mass. Number of mole is equal to mass over molar mass. Huh? And the molar mass is always equal to the relative atomic mass of a substance. Huh? For example, so if the relative atomic mass of X is 56, then the molar mass of X is also 56. Now here, they want us to find mass, right? So therefore, mass is equal to number of mole multiplied by the molar mass uh, or the relative atomic mass because they are the same. Uh, the value are the same, okay? They are different things, okay? But the value is always the same, okay? So if we want to find the mass, we need to know the 
number of mole and the relative, relative atomic mass. Huh? Now the relative atomic mass of X is already given. Already given. Huh? So it means we have this already here. It's 56. Huh? But we don't know the number of mole. We don't know the number of mole of X. Huh? Some student, they can say, hey, the number of mole is 2. No. This 2 and 3 uh, is only the, the ratio. It's the ratio. It's not the number of mole. Okay, it means that if you have 2x, then you have 3o. If you have 4x, then you have uh, 6o. That's all. Okay. So this is not the number of mole. But this ratio can help us to find the number of mole. How to find the number of mole? Okay, uh, to find the number of mole, first you need to know the number of mole of oxygen. Okay. So let's find the number of mole. Eh? Number of mole. Uh, number of mole is equal to the mass, 14.4, divided by the molar mass okay the molar mass is 16 eh? okay 14.4 divided by 16 eh? and this is equal to 0 0.9 ah uh, this is the number of mole number of mole equal to mass over molar mass eh? or number of mole equals to mass over molar mass now we have the number of mole of oxygens oxygen eh? 0 0.9 mole and we know that the ratio of x to o eh, is 2 to 3 Okay, means that if we have 2x, then we have 3o, 4x, 6o, 6x, 9o. Okay. So th th this is a ratio. Okay, so if we know the ratio and we know the number of mole of oxygen, what is the number of mole of x by referring to the ratio? Okay. 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Why? Because the ratio is 2 to 3. 2 to 3. If this is 4, this is uh, 6. And if this is 6, this is 9. Okay. Uh, of course, if this is 0 0.6, then this is 0 0.9. Okay. So now this is 0 0.9. So this must be 0 0.6. Eh? Uh, that is how we find the number of mole of a substance. Uh, if we know the ratio, the ratios of the elements in the molecule, the ratio is 2 to 3. Eh? If you know the ratio and you know the number of mole of one of the elements, then you can find the number of mole of the others. Now, we already have the number of mole, okay? And we have the relative atomic mass for X. So therefore, we can find the mass easily, okay? So the mass, this is the mass of X, huh? okay? So the mass of X is equal to number of mole, 0.6 multiply by uh, relative atomic mass 56 okay so what's the answer use your calculator to find the answer 33.6 gram yes 33.6 gram uh, this is the mass this is the mass of uh, x okay because they want us to find the mass uh, what's the mass of metal x this type of questions uh, is the hardest calculations questions in SPM chemistry this is the hardest but it's very important eh? it's very important so uh, if you can really understand this okay uh, then you should have no problems in solving calculations questions for chemistry let's see the the strategy in solving these problems eh? first from the formula we know the ratio we are given the mass of oxygen so from the mass we can find the number of mole. So from the number of mole of O and from the ratio, then we can find the number of mole of X. And from the number of mole of X, we can find the mass of X. Yeah, actually it's quite complicated and the working is very long. Huh? But anyway, I hope you can understand it, okay? Yeah, because uh, these types of questions come up quite often in chemistry. Sometimes uh, the student will ask, uh, teacher, okay, so you write the answer in this way, it's uh, quite messy, right? It's quite messy, yeah? So can you please show the proper working? Uh, let me show you the proper workings. Uh, if you're asked to solve these problems in the exam, okay, so what's the proper working? Uh, what I show here is just for the ease of discussions, eh? okay, for the ease of discussion. In the exam, uh, you don't need to show this, okay, you don't need to show this, huh? In exam, if you see these types of questions, what do you do? Uh, the very first things, uh, the very first thing is you find the number of mole of oxygen. Number of mole of oxygen. So you write uh, 
number of mole of oxygen. So number of mole is equal to mass 14.9 uh, 14.4 divided by the molar mass 16. Eh? So this is equals to 0 0.9 mole. Now after you have the number of mole of oxygen, then you find the number of mole of X. Eh? So number of mole of X is equal to uh, 0 0.9 times 2 over 3. Eh? Because the ratio is 2 to 3. Eh? 2 to 3. So times 2 over 3 and uh, this is equal to 0 0.6 mole. If you don't want to show this working, it's, you can straight away write 0 0.6. Not necessarily you must show this 0 0.9 times 2 over 3 here, okay? Because uh, you know the ratio is 2 to 3. So if this is 9, this must be 6. Huh? So straight away you can write number of mole of x is equal to 0 0.6. So after you have the number of mole of x, okay, uh, then you can find the mass of x. Huh? Mass of x is equal to number of mole multiplied by the molar mass, 56. And therefore is equal to 33.6 gram. First, we find the number of mole of oxygen. So because we have the mass of oxygen, we can find the number of mole. And from the ratio, we can find the number of mole of x. And uh, from the number of mole, then we can find the mass. Of course, you need to be very, very clear eh, about these questions. I, I, I call it the advanced calculations questions. Eh? Advanced calculations questions or advanced uh, numerical problems eh, in this chapter. And this considered the hardest questions in SPM chemistry. 